We already covered parameter encryption in our lecture G and how to use it with the TPM2 tools. It is important to remember that to enable parameter encryption, we need to create a TPM session. And out of the four types of TPM sessions, there are only three that support parameter encryption. In lecture G, we focused on HMAC sessions and policy sessions, and for a good reason. Audit sessions have a special purpose. Here, I'll give a bit of information about audit sessions for the curious students. While audit sessions are out of scope for this course, I want you to have this information to understand why audit sessions are not the best fit if you just want to use parameter encryption. When audit sessions are present, the TPM is instructed to generate hash over the command and its parameters and response when executing. The value is stored and later can be retrieved with a dedicated TPM2 command. Audit sessions support parameter encryption as we mentioned, so this computation and the execution of your TPM2 command is protected while this happens. At the same time, if you don't need this audit capability of creating a log trail for the commands and their execution, then using audit session to enable parameter encryption is a bit of an overhead. It is much better to just use HMAC sessions. Going back to what we know so far about parameter encryption, this feature enables the TPM to protect the very first parameter of a comment that supports parameter encryption. Why not all comments support it? Because not every comment has sensitive information. In fact, in some cases, it might be only the comment itself that we are requesting from the TPM, or it is only the response that contains the sensitive information. For example, when reading an NV index, Remember the interesting case with the symmetric encryption command in the TPM? There is now a newer version and the original one was deprecated. The TPM2 encrypt decrypt 2 makes one significant change compared to the previous command. It moves the data payload as a first parameter in the command structure. This means that now using parameter encryption, this payload can be protected when sent to the TPM. I know this looks too easy, especially when we are using the TPM2 tools which make it so straightforward to enable parameter encryption. But did you know that in fact, we can enable only the sending of the data to the TPM to be encrypted or vice versa, only the response from the TPM to be encrypted, but our command request to be non-encrypted. Let's look under the hood, what happens when we use an API? What was hidden from us when we were using the TPM2 tools was the different attributes. Session attributes more or less define how the session operates, for what it can be used. There is a detailed explanation in the TPM specification, and I have put here the chapter and the reference to that part. These session attributes are set in one byte field. The field name is important because we need it later. It is TPMA underscore session capital letters. This means that every attribute is in fact a bit field. Depending on if it's set or clear, there is a different behavior in the TPM. The most important session attribute is the continuous session. This specifies if after the execution of the command, the TPM session expires. Out of the available attributes, these three are the important one for parameter encryption. Continuous session enables a TPM session to live on after the command execution. Otherwise, by default, it expires. It is not active and we need to create a new one. You didn't know about this because the TPM2 tools conveniently by default set this flag alongside the other two that we're going to look in a moment. Now we come to the interesting part that actually parameter encryption gives us the choice if you want all the communication to be encrypted or only the command request that we send and the TPM has the responsibility to decrypt it before unmarshalling what we sent. And vice versa, we can have a situation where we instruct the TPM that it will receive a plain comment, but the response has to be encrypted. And then it is the responsibility of the stack to decrypt the payload for us, given the uh, session information that we provided. 